Guys, it's great to see you all again after meeting at Fright Fest. Now, for anyone who doesn't quite know about the world of the Twisted Twins and doesn't know what to expect, let's give them an idea. Now, you guys in the past have compared yourselves to Lars von Trier and Joss Whedon. <laughs> who is who and why is that? I am Joss Whedon. And, I'm and she's Jen. also Jen. <laughs> and I'm also Jen. Jen and Joss. And Sylv is Lars and, of course, Sylv herself. And it's because I like to put the heart into things and she likes to take it out and then take a crap on it. And Not the, literally. The artistically way. in a beautiful shot way. <laughs> I'm, I'm the optimist. I'm hoping for a better world even in the face of, you know, a lot of negativity. And she is just like, oh, it's crap. Honest to God, if she didn't exist, no one would watch the movie. It would just be like, <laughs> I want to cut my wrists afterwards. And because of her, it's like, oh, I can bear this. It's yeah. not too <laughs> awful. She'll write something terrible, and then I'll be like, oh, God, I have to be really funny now. <laughs> no, the only reason I think the film has that light in it is because of these two women beside me, Katie and uh, Jen, because they brought so much warmth and light into something that was so unforgivingly dark. I remember I had my mom read the script. She's like, oh, my God. I was like, no, it's okay. Jen and Katie are going to make it awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be bearable. <laughs> That is Katie. She's our little beacon of light. Yes, Aww. yes. That's what everyone says about me. Just a ray of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Katie, now I know, of course, you're obviously an actress, but you've also grown up on film sets in another way, haven't you? Because both your parents are filmies. Mm -hmm. So you've got lots of experience on film sets. How does it compare being on a film set with Jen and Sylvia here? Oh, be nice, sweetie. <laughs> nothing, no, <laughs> nothing in the world uh, quite compares to being just around these two in general. Um, and on set, they're they're on fire all the time, and on set, they're just up in flames, and they they're confusing in that in that y you don't know how they communicate. I mean, obviously they're twins and they sit next to each other and they communicate, but they communicate so well. And they'll have little twin fights every once in a while. Well, they'll be they'll bicker for one second, they go, "Hang on a minute," and they'll go into a corner and go. <laughs> okay, and then it'll all be resolved, and you're just you're like, "This is fascinating," and everyone on the whole crew would basically do anything for them. They would lay down in front of a train for these two. And that, when you're on a show and everyone, especially a low budget movie like this, where everyone's you know volunteering or working for barely any money, it helps when you have these two personalities that really rally everybody and everyone puts their entire heart and does absolutely anything they can to get it done at the end of the day. And it was a real, it was a real family or community effort. It was all lovely and wonderful and smiles and rainbows, isn't it? Oh, that's very <laughs> diplomatical work with you again. Thank you. <laughs> good girl, good girl. Oh, no, we are literally, because uh, everybody who came on board, it definitely wasn't for the money. We had 15 days to shoot it with a very uh, modest budget. It's part of our get but rich, a massive slow schedule. scab yeah, and it's but, working. Yeah. <laughs> but everybody came on, like they bring stuff from home. They were just so excited. And I think that's why the movie is what it is because you see that in every frame that everybody just went all out. Everybody cared. Yeah. yeah. You don't get that too much. I've known so many sets. I'm like, so what's this movie about? They're like, oh, it's crap. I'm like, oh, <laughs> is that literally what it's about? Or... <laughs> I watched that. <laughs> yeah, your kind of movie, hey? <laughs> My kind is, of course it is. <laughs> now, I know American Mary was inspired by your experiences in the movie industry, Jen and Sylvia, so spill. I um, was amazed when I found out the stereotype about the classic Hollywood producer was real. I was surprised about some of the things that would be said around Jennifer and I. And then when we got into independent horror, it was almost like coming home and we used uh, mainstream medicine and body mod as an analogy for that. But we, we've been acting not really successfully since we were seven. This one oh, has yes. seen so much more shit than we could have ever seen. Oh, we're both proudly failed actresses. <laughs> and I think we're also failed models, failed promotion girls. And being in the entertainment industry, there are those incidents where, you know, you're at an audition, they're like, okay, well, I'm gonna have to, you know, see those now. And it's like. No, no, you're not going to see these right now. These are for me. These are not. <laughs> I grew them, I look at them, not you. Yeah, no, it, it's strange because we, we would do body doubling too. Like Jen, Jen's been on almost a few people's asses and it's like, but it's, mm -hmm. it can be like, it can be a very professional thing or it can be like all the guys that work on set come and look at your ass and like, does he, does a group really make this decision? Is that also there? Oh yeah, I've been yeah. on sets where like people from other sets were coming over and I was like, 
Well, since I'm flattered, but... <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice to have that experience because then when you do do something with uh, sexuality and uh, uncomfortable situations, which we do a bit in American Mary, we made sure it was professional, everyone felt comfortable so they could do that, not like, okay, guys, everyone come over here, someone's gonna be naked. It's like, no, no, guys, it's just professional. It's just, it, if it's a dick, everyone's either has one or has seen one before in their life or it's a few years off from seeing one. <laughs> in the place of uh, mainstream Hollywood, we use the, the medical profession, and it seems a lot of the times, especially in uh, Hollywood, the people that are really well respected and the people that are seen as like the A-list guys can be such sleazebags and so misogynistic, and that is why you know you have those stories like that. With Dead Hooker in a Trunk, it was on a much smaller scale, so we didn't come up to that as much, but with American Mary, especially as we were trying to sell American American Mary and get it made. It was just the same crap over and over again. Yeah, I remember that one question was like, so when's Mary's tits coming out? I'm like, oh, and why would that happen? They're like, because it would be hot. I was like, no, no you need a little better of an excuse for nudity. <laughs> it needs a reason. So Katie, how did it compare for you as well in terms of an experience? Because they've just told me all about their experiences. <laughs> Um, I think growing up, because both my parents were filmies, um, my parents were very clued into you know, what can happen, what can be exploited on mm. set, and they knew everybody, and I, I, I grew up in Vancouver film, um, and everyone knew me, I was a kid, everyone, you know, they were, they were my family, they'd raised me, um, so no one, uh, no one messed with me. <laughs> I was, I was well taken care of and well protected, I, Teamsters and Grips raised me and, uh, and looked after me, and they still do to this day, I still have a extending, extending family that, uh, that will look after me, and I, I you know, I'm, I'm fairly good at keeping myself out of odd situations, my bullshit radar is fairly well tuned and I'm a bit of a bitch myself so no one <laughs> ever tries to <laughs> pull anything over on me. I don't come across as completely innocent and doe-eyed, I don't think so. No. I don't, I don't think people look at me and go, oh, there's one we can mess with. No, 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 there's you frighten people. <laughs> yeah, I like I that try. about you. <laughs> now American Mary, you've described it as being like an opera, tell me more. Well, I, I feel sometimes when people are making horror movies, they almost make it like porn in the respect that like we don't need story or characters or anything as long as there's tits and blood, it, it's fine enough. And that's not why I got into the genre. I love kind of like more interesting stories. And I was like, what if we showed people that you can have something in that genre, but make it really good and really pretty to watch and have more of a, 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 a journey of you seeing this character that's a kind of a mix between the antagonist and the final girl and have everything that she goes through. I feel largely with North American horror, they see horror as just like the slasher films or the horror remakes. And where you look at world cinema, like a lot of European cinema, with, oh, we're in Europe, I always forget that when You're in Europe say, right now, <laughs> sweetie. Uh, and then Asian cinema, things like Let the Right One In and I Saw the Devil, and one of our favorite directors is Takashi Miike, and they ask him, what's it like to be a horror movie director? And he's like, I'm not a horror movie director. I make a great film and I try to put horrific elements in that and I think horror kind of does escape definition. I think that it shouldn't be paint by numbers horror. Yeah, but dad forced us to see a lot of operas growing up too. If you watch it, it's mm. it's got a lot of, uh, it's like a modern tragedy I think. A lot of things you watch are like, oh. But don't, oh if you haven't seen that, don't pay attention to what I said. I don't know what happens in the movie. <laughs> Stuff dies, there's people and it's, it's, a big, and it's another happily ever after from yeah. the two of us. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now, Katie, when we spoke last time, you talked about being a bit of a chicken and you get a bit scared quite easily. So how was it filming some of the more out there scenes in the filming, film? Filming, I'm fine being on set and doing uh, our own movies. I, well, I, I don't like other, I don't like horror movies. I Shut just up, don't. You. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> they affect, they affect, they affect me in ways that later on I'm walking through and underground parking lot with high heels on and my high heels are clicking and I'm convinced someone's chasing me and I get to the door and I'm trying to jam the key and I'm panicking and I'm freaking out again and I slam the door and I turn around and I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, who does this? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll be walking through the woods, I'll hear a snap and I'm like, shit, this is how movies I get killed in start. Like, <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't, well, I'm, I, there's enough of that. I'm already completely delusional myself. I don't need to watch other horror movies to scare the crap out of me. <laughs> um, I just, I get all upset and tense and on set is fine. I, I know everybody, everyone's there, everyone knows me. There's tons of blood and I'm yelling at Jason to stop squirting blood in my face. <laughs> and like, 
that's all fine. It's just other people's movies. I don't know what's going to jump out of where or when. Yeah, I like Alien. I like Jaws. I like classic horror movies like, that are, you know. I love tricking you not into seeing super icky. That was not funny. Because <laughs> <laughs> Selena Gomez was, so was in it. I could sell her as... What if they wouldn't let Selena Gomez be in a movie that was vile and it's like <laughs> My brother and I and your mother, the three of us, were clinging together, shaking, horrified. To be I didn't get over no. that for like hours, days. I hadn't seen it beforehand. I don't I care. Was, you should have known. It got to a point where it's like, oh, I feel really good. There is this so one particular scene. Much. I was like, she did. I just looked over and everyone was horrified. I was like, oh, I'm going to hear She that. leaned over. She's like, I'm so sorry. And then she pinned you down to the chair and wouldn't let you leave. Yeah. <laughs> We might as well see it's how good right? It's a good thing they serve wine in that theatre. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's been great to talk to you again. Loads of luck with American Mary, the oh, tour, and with you. the DVD oh, release as well. So it's been great to speak to you. Take care. Thank that you. was such a pleasure. Yeah.